I saw Crimes of the Future a few days ago, and honestly, I needed a few days to process it all. It's a rich, multi-themed body horror that could only burst from the mind of someone named Cronenberg. I say this because Brandon Cronenberg, David's son, has picked up the body horror baton gracefully over the last few years. Not to be shown up, David has dusted off his directing chair and delivered what may be one of his most interesting, yet shocking and controversial films yet. Courts in session for Crimes of the Future. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below, share this video with all of your social media addicted pals, click subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Crimes of the Future is new in select theaters from Neon Films. It's directed and written by David Cronenberg. In the not-so-distant future, surgery is the new sex, or so performance artist Saul Tenser, played by Viggo Mortensen, and Caprice, played by Leah Sidhu, believe. Their act is made up of placing Saul into a bio-robotic sarcophagus called a sark and having surgery robots sear through his flesh, remove organs that are new and evolving or obsolete and useless, and then sear the wounds back shut. The thrill comes from what is under the skin once it has been pierced. These organs are often tattooed with strange and symbolic imagery that shocks and thrills the crowd who seem to eat this performance up like popcorn. You see, humans are beginning to evolve in order to acclimate to a more synthetic lifestyle. This means new organs are beginning to form in their bodies at a rapid rate. In an attempt to control and categorize these new organs, a committee consisting of eager researcher Timlin, played by Kristen Stewart, and her co-worker Whippet, played by Don McKellar, are fascinated with the rate Saul is growing and evolving. Looking for the next big thing in biological performance art places Saul and Caprice in the path of grieving father Lang, played by Scott Speedman, whose son was killed by his mother in the opening moments of the movie. The boy's mother believes the boy to be a monster when he begins eating plastic in order to survive. Lang approaches Saul to take his performance to the next level and give a live autopsy on this boy in order to discover what new wonders lie under his skin. Of course, when you keep tabs and control of everything, the government wants to stop this very public performance. Now, after seeing the film and knocking it around in my skull for about 72 hours, that's what I've been able to glean as the plot of Crimes of the Future. It's one of those films I found to be very difficult to immerse myself into, partly because of the unusual and downright disturbing imagery and actions going on, and partly because Cronenberg has developed an entire universe for which this story takes place in. There are government agencies, underground rebellions, art movements, rogue vigilantes, spies, enforcers, and informants. There's a hell of a lot going on in Crimes of the Future, an entire culture and society created to make the story happen, that it really takes for a while for it all to sink in and get straight. One of the things I found difficult is that while Cronenberg isn't above giving a lengthy discourse about what's happening and why, he often bathes it in ambiguous speak, bizarre science and situations, and actors who are just playing it downright weirdly. Having watched most of David Cronenberg's films, I think I missed Spider, Cosmopolis, and Dangerous Method, but I want to rectify that soon. I think I understand the various themes he often explores in the genres of horror and sci-fi. I can only imagine the shock and confusion one might feel if Crimes of the Future were the first Cronenberg one experiences. Cronenberg has explored a number of themes in his films, such as man's manipulation of his own body, society's manipulation of the same thing, government conspiracy in regard to controlling evolution of biology and technology, how psychology affects the development of the body and tech, how far science should go in order to advance as a species, and an overall ever-evolving codependence between man and technology, specifically popular modes of entertainment, sex, and overall communication. Crimes of the Future seems to take all of these themes, puts them in a blender, and hits frap. All of these themes come up in one form or another in Crimes of the Future. The problem is that it is such an expansive story that I don't think it delves into one aspect of it enough and properly. The film is successful in giving a brief crop dusting of the material, 
but never spends enough time to go balls deep into it. Instead, there are just players moving around in this thematic fishbowl and occasionally running into one theme or another. It wants to say so much, and I think if you're well-versed in Cronenbergian lore, you can glean some intention, but to the layperson, it's going to be quite a slog. From what I understand, simply from the title alone, Cronenberg's main focus is the famous Goldblumism, just because we can doesn't mean we should. And more accurately, that's the thought process of the government in the world of crimes of the future. Humanity is evolving, but the government, attempting to maintain order, is trying to understand this new development, set parameters for it, and move slowly enough to maintain some kind of order to it. Of course, the debatable issue is that there are people who believe the government should keep their paws out of their own bodies, an issue that is very much ripped from current headlines. And then taking another broad step backwards from that debate is the fact that this is evolution, and no matter what the debate and who debates it, evolution is inevitable. So much of the effort that goes into trying to rebel against it, debate about it, and dissect it ultimately turns out to be folly. Change is coming whether you like it or not. Cronenberg approaches this subject from the angle of the artist by centering his camera mostly on Mortensen's Saul and his partner Caprice. There is sort of an exploration of their relationship, and I think if you're looking for the most concrete aspect to the film to latch on to, that is it. Through the lens of their confident and understanding symbiotic relationship is how we experience the entire movie. But while Mortensen and Seydoux are fantastic actors, they're playing unusual characters. They are artists who live on the fringe of society. They are also popular in the art scene, which gives them an air of pretentiousness. Saul sports a black robe through most of the film, covering his face any time he's in public. He speaks in riddles like some sort of prophet, though he's honest enough to say he has no idea what he is doing on occasion and how any of it works or what it means. These glimpses into Saul's attempt to understand and explore the world were his most interesting. I read that Mortensen was actually in a lot of pain due to a horse riding accident, and I can imagine he used the pain to accentuate the constant agony he is in as Saul, whose body has been wrecked with all of the evolution and surgeries he has endured. One of the most visually striking images, and there are many, is watching Mortensen sitting in a feeding chair made of some kind of bio-organic material and attempting to eat. Because of these surgeries and evolutions, his body's digestive system is a wreck, so this chair is supposed to move his body in ways to help aid that digestion. Still, this is a disgusting looking machine, and Mortensen's hacking, choking, and gargling while he tries to digest is definitely going to turn some tummies in the audience. Consumption is a running theme in Crimes of the Future. Saul's digestive problems seem to be his main discomfort, and its solution is his driving motivation. The secondary characters of Lang and his son both have issues with digestion. And then we have the audience's appetite for new and more shocking entertainment, and how that continues to be the inspiration for Saul's increasingly dangerous performances. The much-publicized Ear Man scene is a performance piece that occurs in the middle of the film. As Saul and an art critic sit in the audience, the critic points out how the ears are only for decoration and seems disappointed when she finds out that they are not functional. Paired with the repeated mantra of, you will not speak, listen, one can take away that this performance is talking about the government's desire to control without question, just eat up this order and be satisfied. How appropriate that the main characters of this film have problems digesting what is given to them and are attempting to find a solution to that. Ultimately, it's a story that can be boiled down to a man's never-ending struggle with authority, chaos versus order and all that. At the same time, since the ears in the piece are not functional, it's also questioning the worth of art. Since it's all simply theater, is the message being conveyed and understood, or does it all just look pretty, loud, thrilling, and weird? This existential question is one Saul ponders about his own act, and one Cronenberg seems to be pondering as well in regards to his cautionary sci-fi tales like Videodrome, Scanners, Existence, The Fly, and now Crimes of the Future. As society seems to fall victim to the threats in his tales despite his visionary warnings. But thematics aside, Crimes of the Future is a visually intriguing and appalling movie. Rumor has it most people walked out of the opening scene where a boy is murdered by his mother. 
I say, if you found that scene offensive, there's no way you could be prepared for the inhumanities and monstrosities to come. New Age body horror sex, strange machinery, body modification, killer candy bars, and medical probes are littered throughout. Just when you think it won't get grosser, it does. Cronenberg has the strange ability to make the bizarre seem mundane, and then at the same time make things we take for granted seem alien and strange. People don't even kiss regularly in this film. It's more of some kind of awkward and sometimes upside-down movement that just doesn't feel or look natural or right. On top of Morganson's angst and pain-ridden performance, Seydoux is phenomenal as Caprice, who acts as Saul's anchor as he ventures into dangerous territories. Not only is she mesmerizingly beautiful, but she seems the most human of the entire cast. While he doesn't really show up in the commercials, Scott Speedman is strong as the desperate father who is struggling to fight back against the ever-constricting rules of the government. And though she only shows up in a few key scenes, Kristen Stewart is surprisingly restrained as the curious yet fearful researcher who is perversely overwhelmed by the performances she is seeing for the first time in Saul's art. But in the end, the takeaway is going to be that Mortensen is a treasure of an actor, and I love it that he has become such a Cronenberg regular. So is Crimes of the Future any good? I came away from it intrigued by all of the new sights, sounds, and thoughts I experienced. That's always a good thing. I think it never delves too deeply into one aspect of this very expansive world, and that serves as a detriment to how the overall story will be understood. The performances were iconic and strange, but so alien they could almost be called inhuman at times and hard to latch on to. This is fun in a dream world sort of way, but without one anchor to reality, the film can be perceived as listless and meandering. I would love to see Cronenberg return to this world, either in film, TV, book, or even comic book format. There's a lot to say and glean from Crimes of the Future. Hopefully, I did a decent enough job taking it apart a bit, and if you found even a little of this long review intriguing, you might be the type of person to take the plunge. There really hasn't been anything like Crimes of the Future before, which is another ongoing theme with Cronenberg's expansive, revolutionary, and often perverse and nauseating resume. Stuck inside your reality, your